yes, oh yes, oh yes. This is episode number seven of the Midlife Crisis Podcast. Uh, I've been talking with my family. I don't know. They they think I should change the, the name of the podcast to to Heat from the Seat. What was the other one, Bridget? My daughter Bridget's here. She she's Monday Night Quarterback. Even though it's a basketball podcast, but Bridget's here. She's the one to blame for the music. So if you like the music, that's her pick. So on Jan, our next episode is dealing with Proposition 48. Proposition 48 for you uh, basketball fans in 1980. January 13, 1986, NCAA schools voted to adopt the Proposition 48. It was a controversial that mandates uh, minimum high school grades for scores and standardized college entrance exams. We had Seth Greenberg on early. He was talking about education and student athletes. Um, the proposition, which was passed by a large margin, had disproportionate impact on mainly black males. 51% of the black male athletes would not have qualified for Proposition 48 in uh, 1982. Um, the historically black uh, schools led by Grambling State President Joseph Johnson adamantly objected to the bylaw, stating uh, this rule would be denied blacks equal protection and opportunity for those who propose, propose it, knew it. He said, Proposition 48 required incoming freshmen to maintain a 2.4 grade point average and average core curriculum of 11 core classes in, in English, math, and science, as well as you had to have a 700 SAT, 1,500 ACT, and also uh, maintain it, keep a C average. The day after the Proposition 48 was passed, John Thompson uh, walked off the court in protest against Boston College. He stated, I've done it because out of frustration, you're limited in your options of what you can do in response to something I felt very strongly about. Uh, John Thompson said, he even, he even mentioned this in, in his book I was reading, which was, I came as a shadow. Uh, I came as a shadow. It, it talked about uh, Jane Kemp, which led me to this book. Jane Kemp, Takedown, it was written by his uh, her uh defense attorney. Jane Kemp was a tutor at, at uh, University of Georgia um, and a tutored athletes. Uh, she was demoted and fired. Uh, with that, it was a traumatic experience in her life. She had two suicide attempts. She ultimately won her case, won her case, but it, it did have effect on her health. And it was mainly due to, to athletes. Ath she failed three of the athletes on the football team. And there was some grade fixing going on from the Dean, which had these athletes uh, play in the 1982 Sugar Bowl, which were they were eligible. She would have ruled them in, ineligible. She, in the, our day and age, she'd be called a whistleblower. The lawsuit made the NCAA to react and start this proponent of Proposition 48. Uh, my next guest was affected by Proposition 48 from my hometown. He ended up playing at Old Dominion University before he went to uh, – community college or, or prep school up in Maine. My next guest is going to be a center, 610 center from Elizabeth, New Jersey, Alon Wright. Well, Alon, thanks for, uh, you know, coming on the show and thanks for, uh, you know, getting back to me. Um, we're the same age, grew up, both grew up in Elizabeth. You played basketball for Elizabeth High School when it was a criminal uh, powerhouse. I, I was in the stands watching. So I remember you playing. Um, and uh, I'm like, I started the show. I was looking up for concepts for show, show. And then uh, I saw on a Facebook pay, uh, page somebody talking about Proposition 48. And then you in the comments said, "Yeah, that was me." So Dave Sturgeo is here. He's a, he's a producer, so he was like, uh, he wasn't too familiar with Proposition 48. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about Proposition 48 and you like your your journey, your experience through it. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, James, thanks so much for for having me. And I think my uh, story is 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 pretty unique because it came at a time where, you know, Proposition Forty Eight was was like the thing, right? You know, you had an elite class of athletes coming through, uh, you know, in the early early eighties that you know excelled on the on the athletic field on the basketball court, but maybe just had some challenges and some difficulties in the classroom. So just as as uh, you know, just to kind of set the context here, you know, Proposition Forty Eight was a um, was a rule that was put out by the NCAA, which at the time, if you were a student athlete, you needed to have at least a two point oh 
GPA uh, in a core set of college preparatory academic work on the, at the high school level. But most importantly, you needed to have at least a 700 on the SAT. Um, I fell into Prop 48. I mean, I had a pretty decent GPA at like a maybe coming out of Elizabeth High School. I had like maybe a 2.5. Okay. But those standardized tests, man, I mean, just really caused me all kinds of anxiety. And I mean, just quite frankly, and to be open and honest, um, I, I just was not good at taking tests. And, 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 so, you, and yeah. you're not alone with that. <laughs> you know, th th that that's a real that's a real thing now. So I mean, yeah. and I, I, I'm walking in the same. I'm walking lockstep with you. So not to cut you off, but to keep on going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the situation, you know, with me. And and, and then James. I mean, I, I think you've already touched on it. You know, the reputation that Elizabeth High School had back in the mid '80s. You know, late '80s. I mean, we were clearly, you know, a powerhouse uh, team. Um, I, I actually came to Elizabeth High School as a ninth grader. Uh, I was I was six foot five, uh, weighed about 140 pounds, and I, I, I kind of got discovered by uh, here's a name for you, you know, the legendary coach Ben Candelino. Oh, sure, he's still there. <laughs> yeah. he's still there. Oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> uh, in, a, in an open gym, uh, you know, and, and for me, it, it was just more about the curiosity of the game. Uh, but quite honestly, I, I, I couldn't walk and, and chew gum at the same time. Um, one of the things, if you know anything about Coach Candelino, I mean, he's, he's a fiery coach, but, you know, Coach Candelino took a particular interest in me in, in my ninth grade year and, um, you know, kind of laid the foundation to form a, 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 uh, a relationship. When I got to my sophomore year, I, I went out and, and made the JV team. At that time, I grew from six foot five to about six foot six foot nine as a oh, as wow. a ten yeah. grade. So I had that I had that infamous growth spurt yeah. going into my uh, tenth grade year. And again, you know, Coach Canalino was a was a fiery coach, but you know, I, I like to tell people that he kind of adjusted his 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 demeanor where he just where he just really had patience and and understanding because I think what he saw in me was a kid, you know, that, that was, you know, pretty shy and, you know, not very confident and really was just trying to, uh, you know, explore this, this, this game of basketball. So. Uh, well, I mean, you look back in the late eighties, I mean, you played with the Jackson bros, Malik Jackson, Jamil Jackson, who played at, at Rutgers, Alcides Catano, Lawrence Thomas went out to UNLV, uh, Luther Wright, obviously who went to Seton Hall, uh, Mike Brennan, you know, Princeton. So, I mean, you were surrounded by, by good talent. So, I mean, it was, it was, it was good. It was a good time in the city of Elizabeth. I mean, your biggest nemesis was St. Anthony's. I think, uh, I think you graduated 89. They, they beat you in the first tournament of champions, but uh, you know, it was, it was a good time to be at, at 600 Pearl street in, in Elizabeth high school. So. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I have to correct you. I actually graduated in 88. So 88. Was okay. About... I wasn't sure. 88. So. Yeah, when, when you talk about Malik and, and and some of those other guys, they were they were after me. But interesting story: my senior year, going into my senior year, uh, about six foot ten, one hundred and ninety pounds. Along comes uh, Luther Wright, no relation. Um, yes, yes, I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, no relation, Luther and and I actually had met years before because we we both played for the Road Runners, uh, Sandy Pionin who's, uh, you know, kind of like a legend on the AAU circuit and, sure, and yeah. kind of got that introduction, not only to Luther, but to some of the, uh, you know, St. Anthony greats, you know, Bobby Hurley, Danny Hurley, Jerry Walker, yeah. Terry DeHair and those guys. So yeah. it, it was it was interesting because here I am, you know, kind of souped up going into my senior year and saying, hey, look, after all these growing pains and struggles, you know, playing uh, JV, I should mention I played JV in both the 10th grade and and my junior year, which is rare yeah. because I, I think what Coach Candelino wanted to do was just to kind of de develop me and give me that game confidence. Here I am, suit for my senior year, and along comes a seven foot two, 250 pound behemoth of, yeah. of Luther. And, and yeah. plans just, just, just kind of, you know, quickly change because I, uh, even for, I even forgot to mention Chris Gatlin. So you're in between yeah. Luther Wright and Chris Gatlin. So it's just like yeah. uh, who played a couple of years in, in, the, in the NBA. So. NBA, yeah. And, and interestingly enough, um, you know, and, and I'll just kind of, you know, share that, you know, my uh, 
my uh, senior year, to, to say the least, was was pretty rocky. I mean, I actually played behind Luther, where where you know many people just kind of thought that I would, you know, be uh, you know the starting center. But again, understanding the politics and you know love my time at Elizabeth, it was really more about nurturing Luther and, and bringing him along. Yeah. Um, so back to the Prop 48 story. So took the SAT about five times. The highest score that I got was a 640. <laughs> Oh, so close, so, so close. Yeah, so. yeah, so close, but yet so far. So yeah. that after uh, graduating Elizabeth High School, I, I had signed with Old Dominion University, which is where, you know, Chris Gatlin was one of the reasons why I went to ODU, signed my my senior year, um, you know, uh, with ODU, was hoping to attend, you know, ODU in the fall. But again, I wasn't able to get the test grade and, um, you know, was was relegated to Maine Central Institute in Pittsfield, Maine, where I had the good fortune to be a teammate of another great, Sam Cassell. Who's yeah, Sam Cassell. Here. In our initial conversations, uh, like, you know, you, you think about these players like Sam Cassell, but just how's the process go? Because, like, you commit, and then how are you notified that you're ineligible? Like, how, does Ben Cantalino come down? Does the NCAA send something? Like, how does that process work? Because, I mean, like coming from the outside in, you hear it about Prop, oh, he's Prop 48. He went to junior yeah. college or he's Prop 48. So how's the, you know, you're giving us an inside look uh, uh, like this is what really happened to the people at that time and in, in, in this you know part of history. So, yeah. Yeah. So I actually got the notification that I wasn't, um, well, first of all, I, I wasn't admitted into, into Old Dominion. And I think, again, because this was an NCAA rule, uh, there was there was a compliance. Obviously, you know, NCAA institutions have compliance people, and and I was informed in um, in April because that was like the cutoff for, yeah, April May. That was the cutoff for when you can actually take the test. I mean, back then the tests were were scheduled during like a particular, um, you know, moment in, in time, and it was Old Dominion's. Uh, you know, someone from the athletic department and the admissions office said that, you know, I, I still remember the letter, you know, you know, we regret to inform you that you were not um, admitted to to our institution. Yeah. And so it was then where um, I kind of had to scramble a little bit just to, you know, with the help of Coach Candelino to get into um, a postgrad program. And, and my options were Fork Union in Virginia. Sure. Which was yeah. a military institution and yeah. um, uh, Maine Central Institute. So, so after you got that letter, there was no communication with ODU. You're basically coach or anything else. Or was there was there any was there any restrictions on them contacting you, or is that you had to re do a restart again? Like you're a new recruit. Like is that exactly is that how, the process, is how the process works? Yeah, so. exactly. That's that's what that's what actually happened. Um, you know. Uh, Although I didn't get it ad admitted into um, Old Dominion, uh, I had to reopen up the process. I, I should just back up a little bit and say that when I was, you know, my senior year, I got recruited. And, and think about this: this, this is, you know, six foot ten, basically, you know, role player uh, in, in New Jersey. But just because of the strength of the team and the program, I, you know, I had some really good looks from like a Rutgers, uh, St. Joseph's was uh, recruiting me. Uh, LaSalle, Monmouth College, um, mid mid major institutions. Yeah. So kind of had some some exposures to you know some some other fine institutions. But um, once I I got that notification that I wouldn't be admitted, the recruiting process opened up again. And, and fortunately, I, I always knew that I wanted to go to ODU just by the way you know the relationship that Coach Candelino had with Tom Young at the time. Which interestingly enough. Tom Young coached in the uh, 1976 Final Four when Rutgers, you know, made, made the Final Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, it was a, it was a great opportunity to get some looks from some bigger institutions. You know, with Sam Cassell kind of getting some looks, we all kind of got that residual, like UConn, Boston College. But I was pretty dead set that I that I wanted to go uh, to, to ODU once I was able to get the uh, the grade. But and yeah, who, that's. Pretty who much did you guys out. play like at Central uh, Maine Central Institute? Is it, it I believe was it a, is it a prep school or is it like a junior college? Like what what type of institution and who did you guys play? Did you have yeah. like a, a conference or, or? Yeah, yeah. So it was it was part of the it, it was the uh, it, it was a it was a post grad schedule. So 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 by that you know we played against other 
uh, area New England prep schools. Um, okay. But we also played against um, uh, the, the the JVs of of some of you know uh, the New England colleges. Like for instance, we we played against Holy Cross's uh, junior varsity yeah. team. Sure. Yeah. So you know certainly you know high le higher level than you know obviously yeah. you know high school, but just really just kind of getting that exposure. And and we actually in, at that level we played uh, under the uh, NCAA rules. And, and then do you have any notable names you play? You played with Sam Castell, any notable names you saw and say, hey, that, that guy's really good or, you know, that, that, that's, that, that any notable names you played up when in your playing days up in Maine or. Yeah, I, I think Sam would, would probably be the only one that most people, the name that most yeah. people will recognize, but okay. I mean, even at, at, at Maine Central Institute, I mean, after us, you know, you had guys like Karan Butler went to, uh, yeah, Maine, um, Maine Central. Yeah, sure. So I mean, he's yeah. a UConn. You, UConn yeah, exactly. yeah, so, yeah. So. And, and a couple of other, you know, folks who who really had some really great, you know, college college careers. But it, it was it was interesting. I mean, I, I went to a land from, you know, in Elizabeth. You know, growing up uh, at the time, growing up off of, um, you know, North Broad Street to sure. you know, going to an environment where you know folks are plugging in their cars overnight. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so I went to I went to Maine once. It's a, it's a great state, but I don't know if I'd go back there. So yeah, I, I give you credit for going to school tough. up there. So yeah, it, it was, oh. tough, but had a had a great experience. And again, it was just really that's what really started my journey to just saying, hey, you know, basketball isn't going to last forever. And and it was really in Maine where again the the whole mission was for me to, you know, get my my uh, SAT score. And, and also develop it, you know, develop because I was, you know, I mean, quite honestly, I was just really weak and, and didn't really have a whole lot of skills. I, I tell people the only thing I could really do was I was I was recruited off of my athleticism. I mean, I, I can run and I can jump and yeah. I, I was a shot blocker, but it was really at, you know, MCI where I kind of, you know, grew in, you know, got some confidence and, and grew into my game. And most importantly, it just kind of set the foundation going forward to just really focus on academics. And uh I started out the preamble for this episode, like Coach Thompson walked off the court back in 1989 when, when the whole prop, when it all came out. What was your thought about that at that time, you know, being from, you know, from an inner, inner city, you know, a challenging, you know, background. Listen, Elizabeth High School, it's a great place to school. A lot of my friends went there, great place to be. But you know, listen, it was it was e it was easy to walk out the door and not go to class. So just like the you know the temptations were there. But you know, what was your thinking about uh, just on on a social level about that about that program? So about about prop forty eight. No, prop forty eight. Do you think that you think it was beneficial, or you think it hurt more people than than uh, you know overall? Just 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 yeah. being in it. Do you think it? I mean, it benefited you, but it kind of got your strength. But what do you what's your what was your thinking of collectively of it? You think it it hurt more people or helped more people or? You know, I you know again just speaking for myself, it it, it definitely helped more 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 people. Um, I, I think you know James when you when you think about college athletics, and you kind of look at college athletics, you know back then to to where it is now. I mean, at at the end of the day, I mean athletes make money for universities. I I, I do think that you know certainly as much as I love Elizabeth and, and Elizabeth High School, you know, I wasn't afforded, you know, uh, a, a stellar education. So mm -hmm. for me, you know, um, it, and just because at that young age, I kind of personified basketball as, as, as part of my identity, it was, it was a wake up call, you know, it was a wake up call. Here, here I am as, you know, as a, as a quote unquote marginal athlete, I really needed to kind of have that wake up call to understand that, you know, getting the opportunity to play college athletics and get an education is, is a privilege. And, and and like I said, you know, kind of going into the hinterlands, you know, the barren wastelands of uh, <laughs> yeah. Central Maine. Yeah, that was really where I came to the realization that, you know, academics is, is probably going to be more important for me than, than what, you know, basketball will, will, will ever be. But I, I do know that there was a very, very strong political um, you know, stance taken on it. You know, these these coaches were impacted because their top players were were being forced to to sit out. And of course, we know what happens when you're not bringing in talent, right? I, I mean, revenue streams go 
go down and, uh, you know, ticket sales goes go down. So I can certainly understand when, when Coach Thompson had kind of had that moment, you know, what he was yeah. feeling when, when that happened. So, yeah. And then uh, just talk about your time at ODU. Now, now you go to ODU, like, I don't know if memory serves. Did you lose a year of eligibility because of Prop 48 or did you get four years of eligibility? Uh, uh, did you come in as a freshman? Yeah, yeah. So on the on the upside of that, so when I when I when I finished my well, I mean it was it was like mission accomplished in Maine. I was able to get my SAT score from, and, and this was because of just some of the rigor and, and the you know college prep and and SAT prep programs. I went from a six forty to uh, a seven forty, so I increased my SAT score yeah. by a hundred points yeah. within within a six month period. And as a result of that, and, and because my, I opened up my recruitment and then technically speaking, you know, we, although we played under NCAA rules, we didn't, we actually were able to retain, I was able to retain my eligibility. So I had four years of eligibility going in, but interestingly enough, you know, even after the prep school experience, um, and, and long story short, Chris Gatlin, right? He was a starting center. So a decision was made to redshirt me my freshman year, which again gave me more time to develop physically and and build some confidence and again focus in the classroom. So I actually spent five years at um, Old Dominion and uh, graduated on time in four years, but mm -hmm. went back for my fifth year and, and got a second degree. And you know, the, the mm -hmm. highlight of, of my ODU career was going to the NCAA tournament in '92, playing in Worcester, Massachusetts, and and going going chest to chest against. Uh, University of Kentucky, Jamal Mashburn and oh, sure. John Pelfrey and, and, and those guys. And, you know, yeah. there's, you know, Rick, Richard Pertino on the sidelines, who yeah. was, was a whole lot taller than I thought he was in, uh, <laughs> in real life. So it was a it was an amazing and amazing, amazing experience. Yeah. Well, and that that's that's something you'll never take away uh, that experience. And looking back at the, the game now, do you still follow the game and do you, do you like the rules that were kind of instituted now with like the transfer portal or, or, or like in, and paid, I mean, you know, do, do you feel like that's going to, you know, what, what's your, do you still follow the game now or are you kind of like, it was a, a chapter in your life that you're, you moved on to? Oh yeah. I, I, I still stay pretty close. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm, I'm still very partial to the, to the big East uh, just by, by, you know, to the fact that, you know, grew up in the, New York City metropolitan area, so still follows some of the games. Well, Big East now is is more expanded, right? It's more like national. I think they yeah. have got a team like close to to the West Coast now, somewhere in the Midwest. But yeah, still still follow the game. You know, definitely, I, I, I I've seen, you know, just just the the whole monetization of college athletics, you know, college basketball, and and, and it's, it's a little disheartening at times because you know these 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 high profile athletes are coming in as a one and done. And, and now it's about the NIL deal, which I, I think rightly deserve, but I, I think college basketball has, has lost its essence. You know, I, I've always tell people, even when I was at ODU, I mean, I had plenty of opportunities to transfer. I wasn't getting a whole lot of burn or playing time, sure. but it was just something about just that loyalty to, you know, coaches who, Give you a scholarship and want you as part of their program i kind of felt that that obligation to just be loyal to the program and not just you know uh uh jump ship when, when things are not going my way i mean you see a lot of that going on now you got guys you got four years of eligibility and and, and they've been <laughs> three to four schools like how yeah. does that happen so, yeah and and then throw a COVID year in and so they're they're playing yeah. elsewhere so so do you still did you still keep the relationship with with Tom Young like, in, in, even in your adult life uh, do you still still uh, you know uh, still talk to coach uh, are you still that that bond yeah well you know unfortunately coach coach Young passed away about uh, I think it's been about two years well maybe okay. about two and a half now but uh, I only played yeah only only played under Coach Young for 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 a year he was he was actually fired and Oliver Pinnell was brought in. But to answer your question, I, I don't, uh, I think I, I keep in contact with a couple of assistant coaches every now and again. Okay. But again, I, I kind of look at it, you know, as again, just even now, um, there, there, there comes a time where you just have to kind of let that go. I mean, it's a great part of my life. It was, you know, built some really strong relationships for the moment. I still keep in contact with the, you know, a, a number of teammates from, from ODU and even at Elizabeth High School, a number of 
teammates on on Facebook, but but just really just kind of went on with uh, you know um, moving moving forward uh, as I'm approaching uh, 54. <laughs> okay, well you, you look good. For February. God bless you. You look good for 54, but Thank I know there's a I know there's a Luther Wright sighting. Or, you know, uh, I know he's yeah. had some struggles of. You know, yeah. I know the Elizabeth community is kind of rallying about him. Have you still keep in contact with Luther? Or yeah. Is it not, you know, so how's he doing? And uh, I know he kind of, there was a Facebook circulation going around. Um, and listen, he's, uh, you know, he, he's an <clears throat> iconic figure in Jersey basketball, especially you coming yeah. from Elizabeth. So so how's he doing overall? And I know they, they did a GoFundMe page for him. I think that your classmate uh, put out a Go, GoFundMe page for him. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and I, you know, I, I, you know, for this forum, I just want to be sensitive about Luther's privacy. Sure, uh, sure. I, I I spoke to Luther about a month ago. He's doing great. Okay. Uh, obviously, you know, I, I think you know Luther's story is well documented. Um, you know, he's had some struggles. I mean, even going back to his high school days, um, you know, had some had some redemption, and and yeah. just like all of us, you know, we yeah, we all have struggles, gotta, right? Yeah. Got to go through things, but. You know, when I when I spoke to him about a month ago, he, he's he, he's doing well, and um, you know it's, it's good to see that you know others are are, are supporting him. I, I think, you know, truly getting out of uh, and, and you know I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm I'm living in Florida and I haven't been in you know Jersey for a while, but you know sometimes it it, it takes you getting out of your environment in, in order to make some uh, progress and. Mm -hmm. uh, when I, when I spoke with him a month ago, you know, he's, 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 he's doing as, as, as good as he can. Well, uh, that's, that's all we ask. But, you know, listen, there's a lot of people thinking about him. A lot of people, you know, uh, you know, appreciate his talent, preach him as a person. So just, you know, make sure you extend that to him. But Absolutely. just getting on to your, your career after you graduate from ODU, like now what did you do? Now life happens. What, what, did you, yeah. what did you do after that? So, yeah. So, you know, when I, when I graduated from, from Old Dominion back in 94, um, you know, I, I always had a dream. I think from from the beginning, I've always had a dream. Although my my uh, my chronology, you know, my basketball chronology from high school to prep school to college, you know, I, I wasn't a big numbers guy, but I always had a dream to play professional basketball. So when I when I graduated from Old Dominion, um, you know, first the first accomplishment for me was first of all graduating with with two academic degrees out of ODU. Um, I, I had the good fortune to play professional basketball for uh, two and a half years in, in Europe. And, nice. and, and I mean, that was like that was like me, like making it to big time. I mean, I, I played in a, a little town outside. My first year, I was in a little town outside of Budapest, Hungary. They spoke no English. Uh, and, and coming, you know, from, you know, growing up in, in, in Elizabeth Port, you know, downtown to going to, you know, Hungary, it was a it was a, a, a serious uh, culture shock, more so from me just moving from the north to the south. Um, had had really good success my first year, and then you know was able to bounce around a little bit to places like Luxembourg, Belgium. Uh, played very briefly in uh, in Bosnia, and then at, at that point it was just like okay. You know, I was able to kind of live that basketball dream. You know, now it's time to kind of get to work. And, you know, it was then when I when I came back and, you know, got into grad school and, and got my master's and started my my career in the uh, in, in the human resources field. OK, well, that, that's great. But like your experience in, 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 in Europe, like like how is the game different from playing in the States? I mean, was it is it is it, you know, are the fans into it? Is it playing in empty stadiums? How, how's the game different over there? I mean, it was probably evolving back then, but I mean, I can only imagine, but like, how, how was the game? Yeah, I mean, it, it was, it, it was interesting. Um, you know, back then it was, and, and even now, you know, international basketball, they play under the FIBA rules. So, you know, one of the noticeable differences between the U S game and, and the European game back there was, was the lane. And, and back when I was playing in, in, in Hungary, the uh the lane was shaped like a trapezoid you know it was like it wasn't just the straight you know like rectangular uh you know lane it was actually you know flared out a bit and it was it was very physical not a whole lot of finesse i mean the finesse that you're seeing now in in the european game i mean that didn't exist when i was playing over there yeah. um 
I, I, you know, I, I was playing forward. So I would go up against guys, you know, that are like seven foot, you know, 290, 300 pounds. And here I am at the time coming in, you know, 6'11", uh, about, you know, 225, getting pushed out the block. And I, yeah. and I tell people, <laughs> you know, one of the great things about the European game, at least for my game expansion, was that I was able to kind of develop a little bit of a, of a uh, you know, of a uh, 14 foot, uh, jump shot. Yeah, that because was that, that was like the that was like the stigma. I guess the big men shot from outside yeah. in Europe, and in the states they would have the back to the basket. Yeah, so, back I mean, to the basket. Yeah, which definitely wasn't me with just kind of being pushed out and elbowed and slapped yeah. and scratched. You know, it was just like, no, nah, I can't have any of this. So I'm just yeah. going to try to get what I can. You know, outside the lane and you know, just kind of look like little tip in dunks and and things like that while they got their backs turned to me. So. Yeah. It was uh, interesting. And I think, you know, the, the other thing, James, about the European game is just the level of passion from the fans. You know, um, these these uh, local teams and, and just this, all the support that they have, um, you know, was 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 really nice to see. I mean, the other thing, of course, there was only either one or two Americans to a team. So uh, culturally, it, it was it was great, you know, just to kind of be taken in and received by the teams. But I tell you, if you're not playing well, I mean, they, they show you no love. And uh, mm. there, there were there were a lot of situations where I know I, I didn't play my best and we lost games because there was big wagers on on the games. And um, yeah, I, I heard about it, you know, and, and it was in those <laughs> moments you just want to try to, you know, say, hey, I'm done well, with this, I'm going back home. But I, I guess that's beneficial. You don't know the language. You, <laughs> you know, they're upset. You didn't know what to say. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. But listen, Alon, I reached out to you uh, a while back. We've been in contact with you. I appreciate the time. Appreciate appreciate you coming on. Appreciate telling your story about Proposition Forty Eight. So, you know, this part of basketball, Lord, doesn't doesn't get lost. You know, from from this new generation. But I appreciate your time. You know, whatever it did, it worked. I mean, you, you know, uh, you carried the interview. I, I appreciate I, I appreciate you coming on, and I really appreciate you telling us your story and everything else. And uh, you know. Good luck to you, and and uh, you know you look great for 54. So I just gotta say, keep on doing what you're doing. So great. So, but, I appreciate but, it. Yeah, but uh, if you're ever in Elizabeth, uh, you know, hook me up. Uh, you know, look me up. So I'll be. I'm, I'm. I don't live in the city, but I still got relatives over there. But I'm around. So, but uh, you know, yeah, happy holidays to you and your family. Thank you very much. Thank appreciate you very much. You yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Alon. All right. Take care. Take take care. Thank you so much for your time. This is gonna be the last episode for 2023. I'd like to thank. Dave Sturcio here at uh, Chop Sports Media for giving me the opportunity for this. Thank you for my family and friends who reached out to me on phone calls, texts, and calling me and wishing a good job. I, I did. Give me the positive. Give me the negative. Reach out to me via email if you know me. Text. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Whalebones. Uh, feel free to contact me with any storylines, any any interesting topics you, you may have. At, at this time, I'd like to I give this opportunity to extend happy holidays to your family and safe in the world, peace in the world, and a prosperous 2024. Have a great night. Have a great 24. Signing off for 2023 here at Chop Sports in Manawan, New Jersey.